What's up there Yu-Gi-Oh fans, my name is Inch95 and I'm bringing you guys a Yu-Gi-Oh market watch today following the ban list that dropped yesterday for the OCG 2017 January 1st season. Uh, it's a pretty big change for the OCG, a lot of errata has occurred, I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I still highly recommend you guys go watch it on my channel or anywhere else that you guys can find it. But I'm going to be using that ban list and pointing out some things that were impacted, particularly in the market that you guys may or may not be aware of. And uh, we're going to get right into it. There's a couple things I really want to focus on. I'm not going to focus on every little detail that was impacted by this, but uh, we're going to get into this market watch. But before I do, uh, I just want to uh, pretty much state a quick condolence to Craig Sager. Um, if you guys don't know who that is, uh, it actually has nothing to do with any of my content. But I was on, uh, on Twitter this morning and I saw that Craig Sager, he's an announcer uh, for the, the NBA, and I'm a huge Craig Sager fan. And uh, I want to wish his family, you know, the deepest condolences. He passed away today at the age of 65. So uh, if you're a sports fan out there and you didn't know, I guess this is a little bit sad news for you. But I'm a huge Craig Sager fan. Going to miss all his commentary with Coach Pop and just any other players out there. His, his sense of humor, his weird dress style and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, on, on a brighter note, we're going to get into the, uh, the discussion today. So most of you guys that saw the list, I have it right here. I'm going to start opening up all the different things you guys can look at. But uh, I'm pretty much going to be using eBay for the first initial portion of this. I guess I can open up TCG Player if you guys want. But uh, first couple things that I kind of pointed out yesterday were the major cards that I think were going to have some kind of impact because they weren't necessarily um, bad, like they even with their erratas. Um, namely, cards like um, Bryanak, um, Rescue Cat, if I can find it somewhere here. Rescue Cat, Bryanak. Um, Imperial Order, Future Fusion's all right. I didn't really open that up in my um, in my market watch, but I guess I can point it out in a minute. And uh, a couple other cards, but those are the cards I really want to focus on today. So the first card is Rescue Cat. This is this card has been all over the place since yesterday. Um, listings are all over the place in terms of what people are asking for it on eBay. So if you go here, I'm on eBay right now. Um, on Best Match, this is all listings. If you go and buy it now, which is probably be a little bit better, more convenient for you guys, you guys can see that there's listings for 70 buy it now, or best offer. Um, pretty much 70 bucks right here for a buy it now. There's a hundred and fifty dollar buy it now for a cat, 120. Um, I actually know the seller. <laughs> I'm not gonna drop any names. Um, this this person is just very silly. I love this person, but. Uh, moving forward, we got another one, 130, 120. Like this is insane for a for a super rare that was released in the o that is pretty much unbanned in the OCG. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why these things happen, um, not necessarily because of buyouts and all these other things that people, um, you know, perceive them to be a, a result of, because it, it can have an impact. But um, these prices are extremely artificially inflated, and uh, they're pretty much just initial prices. I mean, even look at the sellers in Germany are asking 100 bucks. 90 bucks from Canada buy it now best offer like these prices are all over the place but if you go on eBay's completed listings and you go end date recent first well these are the cards that are actually selling so since all those hundreds you know 70 to 100 dollar plus rescue cats have been listed out of the only ones that have sold these are the ones that are selling so there was one that sold for 50 another for 50 um a 20 a 20 this is Jabba right there um this one hasn't sold 19 um 18 these are people that probably bought them out immediately um, but I don't expect that we're gonna start to see I mean I'm surprised to not I'm actually not surprised to see um, as many rescue cats selling as are listed because if you look at it there's a ton of them listed um, but there aren't as many sold so the reality is just because are people asking this are asking for this much doesn't necessarily mean that people are willing to pay that much so um, it's a card that for the TCG is still currently banned as far as you know as far as we're concerned uh one thing that i should preface is a lot of people don't know this but in the in the ocg they were actually allowed to use english cards for a long long time uh or just any any tcg cards as well they're currently no longer allowed to do that to my understanding um in competitive tournaments i'm sure there's probably like locals and stuff uh that do it english cards are definitely quite popular there and just um tcg cards in general because of the difference in rarities um, that was one of the big concerns that I guess Konami had in terms of forcing them to use their own cards and preventing us from using their cards as well. But Rescue Cat is a card I would not be investing in right now. 
Um, it's already just too far gone. It's it's not a card. If you have it, I would literally just recommend selling it pretty much for anything that you can sell it for. If you picked it up a couple years ago for like 10 bucks or 15 or 20 bucks even or $5 from like locals or something and you have a couple of them lying around, I would highly recommend um, listing them because I would expect them easily to be able to sell for 50 because there's going to be that one person that's like, oh my God, I missed out on it. They're $100. And then they're going to see the one person listing it for like, 40, 50 bucks and they're gonna be like, you know, I'm gonna buy this before anyone else does and they're gonna buy it and then you're gonna be like, all right, I just made like 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 bucks maybe. So um, don't put yourself in a position where you're you're in the same situation as these sellers where they're like, they're trying to pretty much artificially inflate these prices where everyone already knows that they're artificially inflated and it's just not selling. Like you can actually check completed and sold listings. Um, if you go over on TCG player, we're gonna go over here, TCG player, where is it? I have the link right here. Um, if we go on TCG player and we type in rescue cat and we check it out, um, there's obviously a lot of different rarities, but if we look for the super, um, there's nine rescue cats listed. Um, the cheapest being 65 bucks lightly played, um, uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh black market. And then the, everyone after that, obviously they're all unlimited because it's a super rare from turbo pack. So the next one after that is 70. So, um, there's nine of them listed here. Um, it seems like the, the prices are just all over the place. TCG player is kind of a little bit higher because you, it seems like you can kind of get them. Um, I think there was a couple listings for 50 or so. Actually, no, I guess, uh, I guess TCG player and eBay are about even on the lowest um, prices. I mean, 70, 69. Um, if you look at the, uh, the lowest here, it's a lightly played. So we're talking near mint. They're about 70 right now. It's just I don't think it's likely to sell. And uh, I, I highly discourage anyone that's planning on buying them right now to buy them. Uh, I would expect this card to go down even if it comes out for us. I think it's still very, very strong. I think it's a cool card. I think it's an interesting enabler, but I don't know necessarily that there's going to be a ton of crazy applications for this card. Um, obviously, you could do like Soul Charge and call the Haunted on it back and use it. Not in the same turn, but moving forward, you'd be able to do that. You can still, I mean, pendulum the card out and use it. Um, there's some cool things you could do with it, but uh, I don't know. I just, I don't <laughs> I like the card. I want it to be good, but I, I don't. I just think this is really ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't even expect that people in the OCG are going to be paying this this type of money for this card right now, to be honest. So, um, once people see that these cards aren't selling, these listings are either come down um, to earth, or people will just remove them because they want to keep it for their TCG band collection, uh, or they'll just settle for some best offer that someone in the OCG maybe gives them, or some desperate soul in the TCG. But that's rescue cat this is probably the most hyped up one that i've seen thus far uh, moving forward we have brian Ack here uh there's tons of different rarities of brian Ack, so this card isn't difficult to get honestly i mean you can get um probably some of the secrets or supers for quite cheap i mean you can see here i mean this is moderately played but um like the the dt one is probably the one we should be concerned with i mean there's a dt one here listed for 50 bucks um if we just exclusively look by dt we can just type in dt right here and then boom look at that 50 60 60 near mint there's eight people watching this there's another 60 right here these are all near mint um if you look it up by secret rare then they're about 20 22 let's see 18 and these are you know these are limited 25 20 uh they're they're kind of they're around the 20 range give or take so um the secret rare is fairly inexpensive if you go on tcg player and you type in brian Ack, you're gonna see, um, you know, a different distribution. We're gonna see the gold rares. I, I didn't look up the gold rares. They're probably the cheapest copy that you can get. So if you really want to get a copy of Brynak and you just don't want to shell out any cash for it, you could really just get like, you know, simple gold rare. They're probably running like five bucks if that, maybe six, seven bucks with shipping if you get it from TCG Player. Uh, the this is the super rare from uh, Hidden Arsenal. I guess I think this. I forget. If, I think this is in the UK that they had this exclusively. The super rare for this. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this one apparently it's 25. There's only one on TCG player uh, The DTs on TCG player about 62 64 and these are near mint So it seems like eBay is actually winning this battle just a little bit on the DT front um, There are like I said, there's a couple right here um, And it's mint too. So I mean you could literally buy this mint one right here and, um, This is probably just a person looking for a fast smart sell which is actually what I would recommend like I said earlier for anyone that has rescue cats um I think it's something that people should just be aware of. Like, if you ever see cards that are instantly, like, artificially inflated like that, I, it's just the time to, like, sell immediately, um, unless you just have, like, a one of and you really want to keep it for collection purposes. Um, next card I want to talk about is Imperial Order. Oh, and quick thing about uh, Brynak. 
I suspect that this card is probably not going to come back for us. I just, I don't really think this card is likely going to come back for us anytime soon, even though, despite the errata. Um, I've noticed even with like the, capa like the, the capabilities of the TCG to allow these erratas to take effect as well. I don't think that they'll implement these changes as fast as the OCG will. And I don't think that they're just going to try and like haul all these banned cards just because of these erratas into legality. I don't think it's going to occur that quick. Um, I just, I don't think it's it's bound to happen, but um, Brian Ack, I would probably say if you really want to, like, if you're looking for the cash, you could sell your DTs, but if you have, like, a low-end Brian Ack like this, it's probably just not worth your time or money to ship it um, and to sell it. Like, if you got it, you know, a couple years ago for, like, 10 bucks or something like that, it's just, it's probably just not worth it for you unless you just don't need it and you don't really care. Um, but the DT ones are probably the most relevant ones. As far as Imperial Order, there's quite a few printings of this card. Looking back, I totally just forgot how many different printings there were. Um, I don't really, I haven't really followed reprints and such the last couple of years. So I know there's like obviously like the legendary collection ones and whatnot. Um, but we see some Pharaoh Servant ones. There's a ton, a lot of the older ones from Pharaoh Servant are obviously going to be quite damaged. Um, or there's just going to be a, a greater abundance of damaged ones. Uh, the secret rare, like if you look at this one, this is a first dead secret for 30 bucks. Um, and it's near mint, so that's going to hover around there. Uh, I think Imperial Order is one of those cards that if it does come back for the TCG, which I don't think it will, I think it's it'll just stay in the OCG kind of like they had Duster for a while. It's just one of those cards that um, I think is going to stay over there. I think the, the TCG is going to be like, okay, okay, it's, it's probably not going to be for us, but... Um, I could be wrong, but personally, I would say that this is one of the cards that it's probably going to retain this price tag um, for a little bit, and it might depreciate just a little bit, because it's one of those cards that, like, if it comes back, it's it's just a card that people are going to want to use. It's a win condition. Um, the fact that you just have to pay 700 life points during each standby phase doesn't matter, because I would pay any amount of life points before I, like, to win a game before I'd, like, actually lose that game. So... It's kind of like, um, I think this is a, a strong point for uh, the First Dead Secrets. I don't think this will go that much higher, personally, just because there are quite a few printings. I think there are, like, we have the DB ones. We have a limited near mint. This is, like, 10 bucks. There's only one left here, apparently. Uh, look at this. They have good condition or great condition ones. Um, let's see. What other ones can we find here? Um, an important thing to notice that I didn't actually do on Brian Act, which I probably will do here, is uh, if we go on completed listings, I'll just do this for Brian Act real quick. This DT one sold for 70 bucks today. Uh, this one sold for 60, 60. So these Brynax, the DTs are actually selling. Brynax, unlike Rescue Cat, is one of those cards that is in the extra deck. A lot of decks can use it. Rescue Cat's a little bit more um, linear. And I don't want to say a lot of decks can use Brynax, but it's just one of those cards that I feel like more decks can use because of the greater abundance of uh, tuners. And it's in the extra deck, so it's, it's very easily accessible. I mean, if this card comes back for us, I don't think it'll be crazy. I think it's just really cool that I could maybe play it in, like, my zombie deck or mermails or something like that, you know? And and it's not like it's going to be insanely, insanely busted, but I think it's still a very strong card, even with the new errata. But this is a card that you can see, um, particularly the DT, is actually selling for, you know, a, a different margin here. Like, you see it everywhere from 70 all the way down to, you know, what is this, four, almost 40 bucks. So, um these are probably the early sales that were listed. These are a lot more of the later ones from, you know, currently that are going on right now. Uh, but as far as Imperial Order being sold online, and this is just at all Imperial Imperial Orders. I'm not looking for any particular uh, rarity of this. If you look it up, um, we're going to have to go Imperial Order Yu-Gi-Oh! Because um, look at this. There's a secret rare, unlimited, used for four bucks that people are buying, used DB for four um, there's just a lot of different ones out there. The uh, LC, the Legendary Collection, Yugi's World, this one's selling for 10 um, So these cards are actually show, uh, selling. I suspect a lot of the other ones that aren't the first dead secret from P PSV are probably going to be going for probably around 10 bucks or so, 10 15 maybe, um, for the most part. It'll probably settle around there. Um, for the mint ones, of course. I mean, there's a lot of uh, non-mint out there. Like, look at this. Even heavily played ones are selling because people just want the one copy in case it comes back. Uh, I think the ultra rare is probably like one of the most unique ones, just because it's you know it's an ultra rare. The other ones are all pretty much secret. So this is pretty cool, but I, I, I don't know. I suspect that this card probably is going to probably set, settle around ten to fifteen for the other ones, for the mint ones that aren't the first ed PSVs. Um, but if you look over on TCG player and we can type this in Imperial order, um, you look all the mint ones here. So this is the legendary collection Yugi's world. This one's selling for 20, 30 for first dead right here. Like it's, it's crazy. This is a pretty big margin 20 and then 30 is pretty big. I would say, and there's only two of those listed on TCG player. 
Uh, the PSVs, there's a ton of damage ones, and there's 31 of them listed. Um, I expect that most likely, because this card is old and a lot of people, whether it's in their band collections or a lot of people um, just have an abundance of them, especially vendors and stuff, it's a card that isn't necessarily too difficult to acquire um, because people have had all these years to gather them despite it being an old card. Um, I think now that there, there's going to be quite uh, quite a big supply that's going to flood the market. So I don't think this card is going to be one of those like insanely expensive cards. Probably, you're, you're probably not running any risk of this card shooting up like, you know, to $50, $60, $70. Like it's not, it's not going to be Rescue Cat 2.0. It's just not going to be like that. Um, if you look at the Dark Beginning one, there's only one listed and limited near mint for $35. So this one's kind of expensive. These are a little bit harder to get the DB ones. Um, it, I mean, it was a reprint set when it was released as is. So... If you look at these, if you go on the Pharaoh Servant ones, if we look at um, Near Mint, if we filter by Near Mint, we're only seeing, what, four of them? So on TCG Player, the low, the unlimited Near Mint is 25. The first, the cheapest uh, Near Mint is 27, 49. So that's something to be aware of. Again, be aware that all these prices that you're seeing, the reality is even though people are willing to pay this much, sellers aren't actually getting that much. And that's simply because of the fact that there's about 12% fees. Um, depending on what you're selling. So like eBay, you know, there's there's 12% fees plus the fact that you probably have to ship the card. Um, I think it's like 249 or something like that to ship. So uh, it, it can vary, but the reality is I, I wouldn't break a leg over these cards. Like I wouldn't bend my back over trying to acquire these cards. Honestly, you could acquire these cards in a cheaper rare or in a much cheaper uh, cost and a different rarity if you really wanted to. Obviously, Rescue Cats, this is the only hollow for it. So it's a card that people always like. It's a cute card. It's a still a banned card for us. Uh, but based on just like the way that things are going, I don't think it's going to be a card that is going to stay anywhere close to that value. Future Fusion is another one that I wanted to look at. Um, I didn't actually look that up on eBay. I guess we can type that in real quick. Uh, there's a lot of different rarities for this one as well. I guess we can look up, I think, the Ultimate or the Ultra. Uh, let's just type in Yu-Gi-Oh! Future Fusion and see what they're... Oh, my internet is down right now. So I guess we're not going to be able to do that. I guess I can try my phone, but... Nonetheless, I think these are the main cards that you should probably be focused on um, in terms of the band cards that were released because a lot of people forget that just because we're separated markets doesn't necessarily mean that something that happens is for a buyout for buyout purposes either in the TCG or in the OCG isn't going to affect um, another you know the other people across the pond. So uh, people over here they love selling cards over there. Over there people love selling cards over here. So. It can vary. There's obviously not a big abundance of OCG cards over here for you know the the purposes of buying cards from the OCG. It's just because uh, a lot of the times they have a, other alternate language uh, TCG cards that people over here want. So um, a lot of the times, like Kyojin and his group, all the all the you know Asian vendors out there, Daichi and all the guys, they all those dudes like they could flood the TCG market with an abundance of foreign cards again if they wanted to. There's already an abundance of foreign cards. So um, if you look at Future Fusion, this is an ultimate Italian. Uh, first Ed that's just sold for 40 today. Um, this was a little while ago. Uh, let's see, we got dual terminal ones. I think I have like a dual terminal one somewhere. I'm surprised the dual terminal one's only two bucks, but it makes sense that people want the ultimate first Eds. Um, for some reason, the pictures aren't loading because my internet's being really trashy right now. But uh, we're gonna see this one all over the place. TCG player, let me see if I can reload this. Come on, internet, don't fail me now. <laughs> Hopefully it works, but I think right now T uh, Future Fusion is a card that you are you can probably wait on this card to settle back down, come back down to earth, because uh, this is a, it's a card that's like a slow rolling win condition in the sense that even with the errata, if you play it, it'll be a card that like you can potentially win if your opponent doesn't kill you the following turn and if they don't get rid of the card um, initially because you're essentially foolish barreling five monsters, so... I'm sure there's some decks. I think people talked about like Infernoids. I'm sure maybe some like crazy like Lightsworn deck. Um, I know it, one of my buddies and I were talking about like ABCs potentially running this card. Um, there's some really cool applications with this card. I think it's uh, definitely a lot better that it like waits for your opponent's turn now, but it's still a really strong win condition if you can resolve it. If you look at Future Fusion on TCG Player, there's tons of different ranges of this cards. I mean, there's the Rare from Power of the Duelist. There's the Ultra Rare. Um, the gold rare, which I totally forgot about. There's commons, there's dual terminals, there's other another ultra rare, and the ultimate. So if you look here for the, there's only seven ultimates listed, but quite a few of them are damaged, it appears. So if we're filtering by near mint, there's only three. They're about 19, um, 50, and 50. So this one is unlimited, though. So that's a pretty big, uh, that's a pretty big and substantial price differential between 50 and 20 for you know unlimited to first ed so these sellers are probably just trying to milk it immediately i don't think these right here are going to sell um this one i can see selling someone you know 
if they really want an, an, an ultimate future fusion and they don't really care if it's first dead, this will probably sell quite quickly. But um, if you look at uh, all the other ones, you can pick them up for still, you know, substantially cheap or, or relatively cheap in comparison to everything else. Uh, the dual terminal ones, I think these uh, could potentially be worth a little more because sometimes these cards are a little bit harder to get. Uh, if you look at these, there are, let's see, if we filter by near mint, there's only two near mint ones uh, and they're dual terminals. These are, this one's being listed for $28. Uh, but again, these cards aren't necessarily selling for that much. These are what's actually selling on eBay. That's one of the things on TCG Player that you can't actually see is what are these cards actually selling for? Just because they're not listed um, on here um, doesn't mean that you can't actually see what they sold for um, or if they're out of stock. So be aware of that. I know this is kind of a longer video. I've, this is like a 20 minute market watch slash discussion, but there's a lot of different things you could talk about uh, in terms of these cards, but I, I personally think uh, keep your money in your wallet. Don't really invest in a lot of these cards, uh, particularly like if you're going to play planning on like picking up any of these cards, wait, you're better off picking up a, you know, picking up a card, like one of these cards in top rarity later on uh, than you are now because right now they're super inflated and even if they go down a little bit, you're going to be saving some money because you don't know if they're going to be coming back for us on our list and it's very unlikely. So um, I wouldn't say very unlikely, but it's relatively unlikely. So uh, be aware of that. Be conscious of the fact that these cards are just, it's just cards at the end of the day and for the OCG, uh, they have a very wide card pool over there and their meta is totally different. So I don't think that just because these cards came back for the um, uh, them, is necessarily going to make these cards continue to spike even harder. Um, these cards, they'll probably just be sitting on here. I just, I honestly cannot picture someone paying 150, 120 for a rescue cat super. I'm sorry, that's just, it's just unrealistic. Like you could probably just go and get a box of, you know, someone, even if it's a little bit overpriced, you could probably get a box of uh, Turbo Pack three and probably pay less and get a rescue cat out of it. You know, I mean. It's it's an it's an it's a super rare at that. So I mean, it's not like it's the craziest rarity ever. So I like the card. I love Rescue Cap, but uh, I don't know, guys. Don't don't get ahead of yourselves. Bryanac is a card though that I think Bryanac and um, Imperial Lord are probably the two cards that I think that could actually have some definite uh, applications moving forward if they do come back for us. Um, Future Fusion as well. Not necessarily in a slower format, but in a format where any Fusion deck is viable um, or any unfair Fusion Foolish Burial esque stuff is relevant. Uh, you know, with like Infernoids and whatnot, this is a card that could probably see some more play. But we'll have to see. We'll have to wait to see what the TCG side does, what KDE US does, and KDE of Europe decides to do for the list. But that's really it. If you guys enjoyed this discussion slash market watch, I know I typically don't do these, but I thought I'd give you guys my two cents. Um, there's a lot of things I could talk about in terms of like marketability and just like how to actually like not necessarily just pick up these cards but like how to think about it and, and like and not just like a micro uh like in a micro a microcosmic aspect or not microcosmic aspect ah in, in and in like a vacuum just like in the micro world versus like the macro world in the sense that like if you look at the macro which is just like tcg ocg side but then if you look at the macro it's like a market as a whole like ebay tcg player um, like the whole grand scheme of like these card values. So each more each of these market values are interconnected and can really impact the value of a card or cards in the other side. So in, in another format or in the other uh, TCG slash OCG side. So be aware of that. Um, I'll see you guys. Take it easy. If you guys enjoy this market, watch discussion type thing. Drop a like, I guess. Likes help the channel grow. And uh, yeah, I don't think anything else is really relevant that I wanted to touch on. I mean, a lot of the other cards, they're probably not going to be that relevant to look at. Um, I think Tenki as ultimate, I think maybe that and Secret Rare Totally Awesomes or something that could maybe drop a little bit because of this, because maybe the OCG players that wanted these for whatever reason from us probably might not want them as much anymore and probably are going to flood the market with their leftovers. So I suspect that these two cards are probably going to be some of the cards that drop a little bit along with maybe Ultimate Speedroid Terra Top, along particularly for the fear of not this coming list, but the list after for the TCG, because I don't think Speedroid Terra Top is going to get hit for us on this list. If it does, I think that's great. But if it doesn't, you know, it is what it is. Um, a lot of the other cards that, you know, came back, Brain Control, I don't think this will be really anything relevant. I mean, if you look at Brain Control Ultimate, uh, this is actually a card I wanted to see. I don't think this card's going to go up really much at all. Uh, but it says eight prices available. Um, so the, apparently it seems like there's no near mint ones listed. Um, the ones that are listed go anywhere from first dead lightly played, which is 40, all the way down to first edition damaged for 7.99. So 
Uh, this is just TCG play. I'm not going to look on eBay for this, but I love brain control. It's a card that I think is really cool, but I don't think it'll be that insane, you know, moving forward. So let me know what you guys think. I'd want to see you guys' opinions. If you guys enjoyed this, like I said, drop a like, helps the channel grow. And uh, I'm sorry this was kind of a long <laughs> market discussion video. So take it easy, guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Inch95 if you guys already don't. And uh, take it easy, guys. Have a great week.